Hi, Ash. Um, could you um, explain to our colleagues just a little bit what Start Ed is and does? Um, yeah, start with that, I think, briefly, and then we carry on about what is special about it. Sure, certainly. Uh, so my name is Ash Kaluarachi. I'm one of the co-founders of Start Ed. Um, I also produce a festival called EdTech Week. Um, Start Ed focuses on the simple mission of attracting and developing an army of education innovators uh, to solve the world's largest challenges. We're also trying to turn hubs like New York City into the hubs for education innovation. Uh, we go about doing so in four ways. Uh, so we have courses where students take um, apprenticeships with startups and they create case studies on the growth of a company. Uh, we have communities of uh, startups virtually connecting with each other and supporting each other. Uh, we have accelerator programs uh, where for a month or three months, startups come to us in New York or the Bay Area and connect with uh, a group of about 250 investors, senior entrepreneurs and educators. Um, and then also, uh, we produce EdTech Week, which brings all those uh, people together, a couple of thousand uh, people in New York City every year um, in June. You told us a, a little bit about what makes your approach to the accelerator different to other approaches. Maybe you could expand a little bit on that, because I think that would be interesting to accelerate the programs at universities back home. Certainly. Um, I think the, the focus that we have uh, is a very purposeful dive into what mentorship is and how to optimize that and, and train both sides of the equation. So training the entrepreneur and training the mentor on how to optimize uh, initial interaction, how to optimize turning that into actual relationship uh, so that benefits both parties. Uh, so uh, most folks, if they are experienced people in the industry, don't understand uh, how to mentor, even if they know how to do what they do best. Uh, and most entrepreneurs uh, usually are experts on their problem or uh, on building a product, but not know how to talk about that problem or talk about their company. Okay. And um, <clears throat> what, is, what is one of the challenges when you have um, educational startups um, compared to other sort of startups that are around? What makes it a little bit more difficult? You, you said something about that earlier, about the time frames and... Certainly. Uh, so uh, you need to recognize that education as industry is in a stage of evolution, um, you know, similar to... Uh, the medical industry or energy or finance evolving to a point where it can be innovated more effectively, um, as did other industries in Silicon Valley over the last decade. Um, now education is getting its heyday. I think it is time for the industry at this point. So at least I think that's a pro, yeah, uh, okay. not necessarily a con. Uh, there are still systemic problems uh, within the space. Um, the fact that there's multiple different stakeholders with competing incentives sometimes. Uh, the fact that it takes a very long time to get stuff done uh, and for people to make decisions within that system. Um, and also uh, the fact that we're dealing with children, not, are not fully formed adults in most cases. So we need to be recognizing that uh, as importantly as we are with you know, people's lives in medicine. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that, uh, that we talked about earlier was um, you said you had four P's that you assess a startup on and that you sort of try and work with to support the startups. Could you expand a little bit on that again? Uh, certainly. Uh, so um, in descending order of importance, we think the most important thing about uh, a company are its people. So um, how much experience do they have in building companies? In general, how much uh, time do they have working with each other? What are the systems that they have, both technical and, and soft, like culture, that help them work together effectively? Uh, second, it's the size of the problem. Uh, so how big is that market? How specifically are they defining it as a, as a problem? Um, third, it's the progress towards solving that problem. So evidence in the form of um, users, revenue, traction, partnerships, whatever that is. Uh, and also, of course, the efficacy of uh, um, uh, the, the product itself is the, probably the last uh, aspect of assessing a company. That's interesting, because normally you would think it the other way around, that you start with the product. If you, if you, if it, but this is, for us as universities, very interesting. If you think about the people being the most important thing, and people is what we have at uni most, what can you give us an idea of where... How can we, as universities, support our students um, 
to become, you know, entrepreneurs, uh, ideally in EdTech, but maybe also somewhere else? I don't think everyone can be an entrepreneur, but everyone can be entrepreneurial. Okay. Um, so because entrepreneurship is is a choice, all right. Uh, it's not necessarily a, a, a skill set. I think um, the skill set can be can be built, but um, it is that purposeful focus on a particular problem over a long amount of time, i.e., passion about a particular problem that make one, makes one an entrepreneur. Um, and it's that passion that drives you through the inevitable initial failures or uh, lack of success, however you <laughs> want to call it, uh, before you actually get to some, some impact. Um, uh, when it comes to, to most universities, um, at least the ones that I've been working with, um, the, the raw materials of, uh, of an entrepreneur or a company are already there. Um, I think the university tends to um, focus on specific pieces of content and specific outcomes that are that are enforced to you know create learning, but they don't necessarily uh, focus on creating a specific outcome in the real world, right? Okay. I think some universities are doing so, uh, but I think in most circumstances, students don't necessarily see the impact of their learning as applied uh, once they leave. So if you can make the time that they leave the world outside of the university as well as the, their time within it a little bit more porous, uh, then, then, then they become more entrepreneurial. Okay, yeah, that's a very good, uh, good trick that we can adopt. <laughs> Thank you very much. I don't have any more questions. Please. Thank you, Ash. Thank you.